Now this is a really fun video because this shows you how to use the progress chart to track all of your progress with sewing the Dear Jane blocks. So first we will again open a project, open existing project, scroll down to the D's and DJ2 progress chart master. That's the project file that you want. So go ahead and click on that and click OK. There's only one quilt in this project. It's called Dear Jane progress chart. Now go ahead and click edit. Now you do have the progress chart on your screen, but the first thing we need to do, again, very important, especially for this project, this project and the Dear Jane Classic Quilt project, it's very important that you save it with a new name. So save as, and then I'll name this D, sorry, DJ My Progress Chart and click OK. <clears throat> now that it has its new name, I can add to it and delete things from my sketchbook if I needed to. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the image work table. So the first thing we're going to do is go to import image and find the photos of our blocks. So I have four sewn blocks here. So I will select one and hit open. But what I did to get these images is I just laid my my quilt block flat on a table and took a picture of it. This progress chart chart does not have to be pretty. So if you have shadows and everything on your blocks, it's not a huge deal. This is just so that you can keep track of what you have sewn and you can kind of see it come together. So um, you can see I do have shadows on my images, but those won't be a big deal once you get it into the into the chart. So I'm going to select this L5. This is row L number five block and click open. So the first thing I need to do is actually rotate this whole block 90 degrees because in the actual quilt, these big triangles are rotated. So click on the rotate button if you need to do that and just do rotate 90. Now, once I click that, it does zoom in on your, your image. So click fit in work table to see your whole block. Now these are in the right positions. It, clearly it's crooked, so we need to straighten it even more. So click the straighten button. And then once you've clicked the straighten button, your cursor changes to a crosshair, if you can see that. What you need to do is to find somewhere on your block that you know should be horizontally or vertically straight and draw a line over that. So I'm gonna use this center line as my guide. So I'm just going to draw a line over that center line. Once I have it there, I can release my mouse and click apply straighten. It's gonna calculate that angle. I'm gonna hit fit in window again. So now this block is relatively straight. The next step would be to crop it. So go ahead and click the crop button. And when you choose crop, you get this crop box that surrounds the entire image. You need to hover your mouse over one of the black squares that's on the sides or the corners and just bring, click and drag to bring it in. Now, I do have a seam allowance on the outside of this block, so I'm just gonna bring the edge in enough to crop out the seam allowance. It's not perfect because I'm not completely straight on on my image, but again, this is just a visual reference. So I did that on all four sides. I just click and dragged these, these lines to a spot on the image. And now I'm gonna click Apply Crop. And I'll do Fit in Window again. So you can see that's, your, that's the image of your sewn block. Now we're not done yet. This is an important last step. You have to do Resize Image. Some of the images that you get from your camera are gonna come in really large. And if we get 225 of these very large image files in this project, it's really gonna slow down your project. So it's very important that you come in here and you change the size. Always make sure this says 72 pixels per inch. It does not need to be any more than that. 72 would be your minimum and your maximum that you would want here. For width, since this is a center block, I'm actually gonna make the width 4.5. And I'm just gonna let the other, the height adjust accordingly. 
says, I do have maintain aspect ratio turned on. I don't really care that one of them's not exactly four and a half because EQ will stretch this image into the black space anyway. We're just trying to get the image size down. So make one of the dimensions four and a half and click OK. Now that you have that done, click Add to Sketchbook. Now we can go back to the quilt work table and click on Photo Tools. You're on the Design tab and then Photo Tools. And all of these numbers here, these are actually images that we used in this chart. So it's kind of hard to tell because you can't see edges around any of these, but they are images that were created. And if you scroll all the way to the right, there is my image. Now this, this block again is L5. Um, so I can just select it. Again, I'm on design photo tools with set photo selected. I scroll to the right to find it L5. And I'm going to find L5 here and it belongs right in this space. So I'm going to click in that space. And now that block is that placeholder block is replaced with the actual block and I can hit add to sketchbook. So let's go ahead and do another one. Go back to the image work table, import image, and we'll get this, this black. This is J4. This one I can rotate or I can leave it how it is. Um, it's pretty symmetrical, but if you do have preference uh, and need to rotate it, you can go to rotate, rotate 90 or rotate negative 90, whatever you need. I'm just going to go ahead and straighten and this one's a little bit harder to straighten because I don't have a vertical or a horizontal to go by. So if it is a little bit crooked, you can always try to use the edge of the block and hopefully you, you sewed it straight enough that you can use the edge of the block. This one's pretty straight anyway. And then fit and work table. So it rotated it slightly. You can see the blue shows how much rotation it gave it. So once you have it rotated and straightened, go ahead and click crop and bring in your edges and kind of guesstimate where your quarter inch seam allowance is. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is again, just a visual reference and click apply crop and then resize image 4.5. 72, click OK, and add to sketchbook. And again, this was J4, I believe. Let's hover. Yep, J4. I'll select that, find J4, click and replace, and add to sketchbook. Now let's do one more. Let's do a border triangle. So click on image work table import image. I'm going to get this border. This is the bottom row one. So the first border in the bottom. Now it's really important because these are more directional, you need to crop them in the direction in which you're going to place them in your quilt. So this one I do need to rotate and I'm going to rotate it negative 90 and then fit in work table because I know that goes in the bottom row. So it does need to be pointing downward. This one doesn't look like it needs much straightening, but again, you can try to use the edge of a block to straighten and, and see if that's needed. Um, it rotated a little bit. Again, you hit the straighten button, draw a line and hit apply straighten. And for cropping, just use your judgment click the crop tool, click and drag get to about a quarter inch inside. Now you are cropping a triangle as a rectangle. So keep that in mind. This white space you're not going to be able to get rid of because it is a photograph. So bring this in a little bit more and apply crop. The next step again is resize image. We don't want it to be this large, so I'm actually going to change the larger number to eight because remember eight by five is the size in the quilt. 
in the actual quilt. So I'm going to make that eight and let the width kind of do its own thing. I, again, I don't care that it's eight by 5.25 because EQ will adjust that once you're, once you set it into the quilt layout. Make sure the resolution is 72 and click OK. And add to sketchbook. Let's go back to the quilt work table. This is, again is BR1, BR1. You click and replace there and add to sketchbook. As you continue to replace images with the actual sewn blocks, everything's going to fill up really nicely and it's going to look really great. One thing that could happen is that you're, you'll notice your EQ starts to slow down a little bit. And like I said, that's because we have all of these images in our project sketchbook. So we have the new ones that we've added, but we also have all of these old ones. If you wanted to get rid of some of the already replaced images, you can do that. But first you need to get rid of the quilts because it won't let you delete photos that are, exist in a quilt. So you need to go to the quilt section in the sketchbook. So again, you go to view project sketchbook, go to the quilt section. Now scroll over to make sure you have your final version. This is my final version at this point. That one we're going to leave alone. So I'm going to go to quilt one and delete. And it's okay to delete this because I did save a new project. We were not deleting out of the master. It's very important you do not delete out, the, out of the master. So I have quilt one selected and hit delete. Yes. And now there's a new quilt one. Delete and delete. So now I should only have one quilt left and it's the one with my three blocks that are set into the layout. Now that I've deleted all of those quilts, I can go to the photo section, click on this three dot option button and choose clear all unused photos. Now this should get rid of the placeholder images that we've replaced already. So those three images that we've replaced, it should get rid of those. So clear all unused photos. Yes. And click OK. So if we scroll over, we had L5, I believe. L5 is now gone. It was it J4. J4 is now gone. And then BR1. BR1 is now gone. So that's just a great way to keep the file size of this project as low as possible so it doesn't get very laggy. When you're ready to add more sewn blocks to the project, you'll open your EQ and go to File, Open Project, and make sure you start with this project, not the master. You don't want to start with the master again because it shouldn't have any of your other blocks in it. Make sure you are working with the project that you renamed and have been adding your blocks to. If you have any questions about that, please contact our office. We're happy to help you with this. Again, this is a very optional. You don't have to do this, but it might help you to just kind of keep an eye on what your, your quilt's looking like before you start assembling all your quilt blocks into your Dear Jane quilt.